Moving on to uh, Gerd and Barra. The very classical um, Ipon Kumite variation would be partner would step back and yeah. then shoot down on their block and counter strike. Um, as mentioned with the, the Aga UK version, perhaps, mate. Right? As mentioned with the Aga UK version, the biggest problem with that is you're stepping back in order to block the technique. Um, so, habitually, you don't want to get into the habit of stepping backwards um, in most cases. Work offline at angles, or if you have the option, work right the way through. So we're going to change the variation slightly on this one. We can still work from a classical attack, so we'll do, we'll do a Yakuza Chudan um, from Fighting Stance. Yeah, that's, that's fine. So that's coming straight in towards my stomach. So from there, I can block down very easily and counter strike from here. And you can work that uh, very out here if you want with that return strike. You can close it in quite a lot and work on pushing that out to, to line up that shot there. Um, you can even close it into a point where you've moved on the inside, you've locked all this in ready to get that strike straight on target. Um, and that's just on the inside. You can also work that, that same blocking technique um, on the outside here, so that you've lined up more, maybe created more space for different targets. And again, you can close it down, so you can be in this close and working it down into the side and to here. Uh, and that's from very linear, um, very projected, unrealistic strikes. Um, working slightly more uh, practically, we can then start looking at those swings and things like that. Um, so just for a, a nice, easy one to start with. So if we break get and barrow down, as we step through, there's there's um, there's two motions going on, or there's two there's two particular points that you look at. The first point is here. So um, the way I was taught and the way I teach is that this arm travels up while this arm travels down. So you, you lock in nice and tight. Um, in the variation of one shoe that is in my syllabus, um, you tend to do this motion normally in close to that. You sink, you drop, tight in with that. Um, that. That's a whole other subject on its own. But for the get and barrow that we teach, it's there as well. So it's in nice and tight here, then projects forward, explodes out of that after. Um, so if we have a swinging punch to the head, I'm not actually blocking, I can't block down anyway. I'm going to use this motion here just to sort of a cover as uh, a ganshin, just again. Um, I've already got my shoulder up to help cover. You know, if I do get hit in the head at this point, it's mainly with the arm. I'm already in nice and tight. And this lower arm's doing whatever it can to hit whatever it can. So as I've covered here, I'm normally rushing in with that. Um, it's almost like a very close range Yaku yeah, Tatazuki from here. Now, I can't from here directly go down to the ground. I could possibly strike into the neck, but that's not really straight down. But what I can enact from there, if you from that side things, mate, what I can enact from there is, I've covered here, you know, I've got this in here, this in here. I can enact the, the barrel part of getting barrel, so it doesn't have to come down that way. Barrel needs to swing, I can swing that way. You know, from there, I've then obviously, I've brought his head down, brilliant. I'm then just going to hug the head, take his head. Um, treat the entire human body like a tree that's upside down. Okay, your brain is your root, wherever that goes, or if that gets cut off from everything else, the entire tree, the entire organism drops. Um, and in terms of an aggressor, they're, they're no longer a threat. If they're unconscious, they're not a threat. So if you swung towards my head and I've covered in here, um, and I'm aware that's a very unrealistic looking attack. I mean, you're still working at um, probably a jitsu level, not, not quite a scientific level here. But I can then swing that into there. I've got elbows available to buy time to get a good shot in at the head. Take that straight through after. 
Um, you can then, if you want, you close in the space, um, as previously mentioned, so rather than working from here, you close the space into a point where, um, ideally, you never want to be at this distance where he's already readily able to hit. Um, but we'll assume that at this distance, somewhere along the line, you, you've not managed to, to avoid that danger, or sometimes it's just managed to, to, to catch up with you. Um, those attacks are normally going to come in real quick, real fast, so sometimes you're going to be flinching in there um, and just generally trying to cover your head, okay, um, whilst getting the most impact against them. So you can work that from there to a hit here. You've got all these options available. Um, so yeah, over time, close the gap in. Um, and then experiment again. Um, I don't like to give very black and white, this is what you do for general videos. I like to have references that just kickstart people's memories. Um, the majority of these videos will be designed for my students who are already doing all the other stuff that's not being explained. Um, but anyway, moving on from that, still with Get and Barrow, looking at the sweeping aspects of Get and Barrow, um, the most common, the most common misconception of Get and Barrow, what's Get and Barrow used for? Block a kid. No, don't block a kid. Um, since James has got fairly big legs, if he throws a main belly towards me, I'll try and stop that. In that instance, even doing it slow, he still hit me before my arm got there. My posture was rubbish. If I actually manage to connect with his leg before he eats me, there's a good chance he'll break my arm using his leg. Um, I'm fairly well conditioned. I ain't gonna try and block that for nothing. If I'm gonna use get and barrow against a, a very classical like straight kick, I'm always gonna get a hold, okay? And I use it as a strike. Um, more like a flinch than anything else. So if I know that that leg's there, it's whoa. Probably not towards his leg. Um, I'm aware he's not boxed at the moment, so I'm not going to eat him in the groin. But you can do that on the inside and the outside. So I can work here. Um, I'm obviously not going to eat his groin from the outside unless I swing in that way. Um, but you can also, um, it's one of the instances where you may back step to get away from, um, away from the strong. You may not be able, if that keeps coming in, you may not be able to get on the inside of it that quickly. Um, so in some instances, as that comes in, you may actually be working your way out. In that kind of a situation, that's when you're normally going to go here, okay? Um, again, it's not something I recommend doing. I don't like to recommend that people throw their arms, their hands especially, at legs being thrown out. Um, because your hands and your arms are much weaker than, weaker than your shins. I've seen a lot of people end up with broken fingers, thumbs, um, you know, other parts of the hand, um, and just generally bruised because they're panicked to put their hands in the way of the attack. Um, if you've got particularly straight kicks, so if you're doing if you're doing things like um, um, probably not kumite um, because it's not something I'm familiar with, but if you if you're just doing some very generic light sparring in the dojo. Um, and you're not, you're not wearing nice big heavy gloves or you're not doing kickboxing type sparring. I don't recommend trying to grab or catch kicks at all if you can just get in the way. Um, the general rule of thumb is if there's a straight kick coming on, so if he throws a mate at it, it's going to get out of the way and close distance. Um, if he throws, if he throws a, uh, a so he, don't want to switch it, mate. if he throws a round edge, if I close in, probably still going to get whacked. So the general rule of thumb with that is I either move well off line, so he's not hitting me with it anyway, um, or it's one of the one instances where I will move off line and away. And usually that's only because I want to set my own kick up as well. But in terms of getting barrow, uh, from a May Gary, uh, we'll switch it back over please. From a May Gary, I'll come this way. I'll come this way, I'll come on the inside, this way, um, or the classical spider comes in there, and again I'm not trying to hit his leg, 
as much as I am moving myself out of the way first, so the other side as well, that way. Um, and then you can throw the Yakuza or whatever after. But again, as explained, um, experiment with the format, okay? It's two very basic moves, but there's, there's loads of different ways you can apply. So experiment and have a play with it and see what works best for yourself.
So we'll have a look at uh, Ageuke, Gyakuzuke. So in a very classical um, Ipon Kumite sense, it would be um, it's a situation where we're both enjoying Dutch, part will step back. They, they, hey. normally, they, normally, uh, they normally pronounce you in time. Shoulder! There we go. So as he steps with that Jodan Zuki, I'm going to step back with my Ageuke and immediately respond with my own. Uh, Gyakuzuki normally to the ribs or the stomach. Uh, step up. It's usually my turn after that, isn't it? Um, so that's a lot of rubbish. Um, I, I actually don't think I don't think I've ever observed that specific action done in Kumite. So even at a very dull level, I don't think I've ever seen that done in Kumite. So I can't see a sporting application for it. And in terms of practical application, it's got one massively glaring problem. Um, so that massively glaring problem is, we'll do the same thing again. Show that. If I step back, I've got no need to use my arms against that attack anyway. If I step back, I've got no need to block. Also, the biggest problem is, I've stepped back. Um, ideally, if I've got an attack coming towards me, I either want to be to the side of the attack, or if I can preempt the attack coming in, I want to be in on the attack. Yeah. So rather than um, rather than retreating and allowing more attacks to come until I end up back to possibly against the wall, um, I either need to be out of the way and then controlling my opponent, or I need to be going straight through the attack itself. Um, so it's it's a lot harder to do, but you can in, you can intercept a, a Jordan Zuki with um, with Ayuki. So um, we won't do it from that that uh, we take. If we just have our partner in a, a general fighting stance, if I know if I know as a partner drill he's going to throw that light cross into my face, I know that's the attack. Um, which is brilliant because it means that I can train the response that if that comes in, I can drop my centre of gravity here um, and this becomes a guide, okay? Um, not only is it a guide, it also offers me contact so I can now feel what my opponent's doing. Um, so I get proprioception on there, or I think the, uh, if I remember, the, the Japanese route would be Ganshin. Um, and from there I can employ my Hikitai here in order to hit here. And I'm still quite wide here, I'm, I'm not in a very good position at all um, from my usual. But from there, I know that that right cross is coming, I'm going to duck anyway, so that worst case scenario, I don't move my arm fast enough and it hits me on the top of the head rather than right in the face. Because um, if we move in quick in training, at some point somebody's going to probably get punched in the head. It's almost inevitability. Um, I say accidents happen, we try to punch each other in the head, so it's not really an accident, is it? So if I'm not fast enough with the arm, I'd rather have these legs to cover this way. I'm going to have this arm up because he has got an extra arm. Before we able to employ it though, I want to use this here. That's, that's good hikitai, that is. That, that's the power. That's the power of hikitai. Pull this up on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so as that attack comes in, I'm ducking under here, I utilise my hikitai here to then um, drag that down, um, pull his posture off, um, open him up for strikes where I roll on a hit, okay? Um, we'll then move that on a little bit, so rather than working from these very linear punches, um, some strikes are going to come at you, probably not that straight, they normally sort of bend a little bit, um, generally speaking. Um, we'll then work from a, a Mawashizuki or a hook, okay? So with that, I'm not going to stand here and try and block. Same again, I'm going to move in and project. Um, the reason I'm closing distance, all the energy is on the end of his punch. And it allows me, particularly if I'm, I'm slightly taller or about the same height as my, my opponent, it allows me to then control this arm and pull it down, okay? If he's, if he's shoulder, he's starting to um, if his shoulder becomes lower than my shoulder, I know that I've got him off balance. Okay, he's either going to have to lean backwards or lean to the side. From there, I 
probably throw him from here to be honest, or just keep punching him in the head loads of times until he's, he's not a threat anymore. So I utilise that hickey tail again with the strike nice and close. Um, moving on from that, we can then start looking at our Ayuki more as a, uh, a striking implement itself, okay? So, um, as it's explained, I think Mr. Hi guys, Jesse Enkem, um, he does it loads, doesn't it? Um, he explained to a lot of people that probably didn't already know the word uke, um, which is commonly known to have come from ikeru, I think it is, which means to receive. So uke means to receive. Now I can choose to receive something using my arm against whatever attached to me, so I'd be swinging that in. My uke can be here, or I can choose to receive his attack or his violent intention with my own violent intention. So rather than trying to stop his arm, I'll ignore that and just shake it all his head. So my Ageyuke, my Ageyuke is a, it's a rising receive, okay? And I'm going to rise my arm into the mush. So he swings in with that, that's my attack then. And my follow-up to that, which is like Yakuzuki, I'm then going to just move in, strike. Especially if I've got if I've got his chin up, I've got his throat exposed, um, and if I know he's attacked me with very bad intentions, um, I will nullify those bad intentions. Please don't direct punching your partners in the front. Um, collapsing the trachea is um, deadly at best. I think <laughs> it's probably the best way to look at it. Don't punch people in the throat legally. Um, so that strike comes in, again I'm rising with it, so I'm using my ability to drop and then push this way with that strike. Um, get used to getting that bit of contact. What that's done then is I'm pushing my away slightly. I'm actually at perfect range there for a very classical looking Gyakuzuki. And I can hit him in the head, or I might want to hit him a little bit lower so I'll bring him back down this way. You know, Always try and make the opportunities to attack the head. And if it's easier for you to bring his face forward into a strike, maybe do that as well. Again, it's something you can experiment with. So your Aga UK can become an entry. So if that swing's coming in here, you know, you'll, you'll end up in loads of different positions. I'm actually very offline and I'm very brave in how I've turned in. So uh, my hips are going over there somewhere, which means that I'm actually at a disadvantage with, with um, my own sense of gravity. I've got to turn to be able to do anything. Um, and you can even look at um, your Agayuke being sort of like a flinch. If, uh, if he's throwing that strike in towards my head, yeah, I can flinch under that there. And then start to look at different ways I can, I can strike towards my opponent from there. Um, so, you know, have a play with it. You can even, um, if you work it, <clears throat> Excuse me, if you're working on straight strikes, if I know that there's a straight here, I can actually use that as a glance this way. I've covered and moved on the outside. So then you go, well, what do I do from here? And you just have a play in the next ball um, and feed it out. Start with a static partner, then have a partner that's going to move. So they've thrown their initial strike, you know, you've got a split second to maybe hit them, and then they'll start moving after that. Um, so you can build it up from there. So you go from that very classical here and here to being able to go online and in to being able to work completely offline even in uh, Gyaku and then round from there um, so that add UK Gyaku in a nutshell so um, for this one we're going to look at using the Osayuki um, as our blocking technique or our receiving technique, more accurately, the the soto the soto portion of it becomes more of a body control, um, and the yakuzuki. For this instance, we're aiming at the pad. But you can also aim it at the head. So if uh, if that very classical looking yakuzuki comes in, you're going to move out the way this way. So that's our also portion here. The soto uke part, rather than it being a hit. It Comes a push and a control, which allows us to set up that strike there, that yakuzuki across um, past that. 
Um, we can, if you want to ignore, not ignore, if you want to change the way that um, that Osayuki um, Soto portion works, you can do this exercise with Jodan as well. So if there's a Jodan straight coming in, rather than um, using the Osayuki to stop anything because you're not going to come up and down, what you can do is you can slip here. Your Osayuki becomes a Mawashi empty across the ribs. Your Soto Uke then becomes you control to get that arm out of the way. The Yakuza then is obviously very self explanatory. You're just taking a shot to the head. Um, so, at, um, if we do a, a get on level strike, we're going to step out of the way, push the arm that way. Target presents if they've got a pad, we can hit the pad. Um, if the attack comes towards the head, we'll slip back with our elbows coming in here, immediately turn that round, and then again we've got a pad there, so we'll hit to the pad. Um, two different ways to the same technique at two different heights. So you've got your Jodan height and your Chudan height. Um, and that's a, it's a nice simple exercise, it's still very much what I consider a, a Do level technique, so it's still very, very much rooted in traditional karate. Um, most of these pad exercises are. Um, they're more designed than anything else for, um, for, for children and beginners to get to grips with. Um, so they're not just flailing arms and legs and pads. Uh, slightly more advanced, we then start to, uh, with all the pad exercises I do, um, just like with the, the Ude UK one, is we, we shorten our stances, we become a bit more natural. We start to uh, position ourselves so that we, we sink we sink into our strikes rather than trying to rely on this big twisting motion um, because it's essentially unnecessary. You, you don't need these big massive twists. If you close your body in, compact everything together, and keep your mass moving forward, you can hit really hard in a shorter amount of space. So the, the same principle again. Um, we're still going to use an exaggerated strike to start with because it helps build. Um, build that sort of muscle memory up. Over time, you change the nature of that strike so it's coming from a much closer range. Um, and you apply it more compact and quickly. So at that halfway point, um, we're still working from that classical strike. So from this way, now, rather than um, sort of being out here, I'm coming in a lot closer and I'm using that to glance off almost, okay? Here, my soto uki can be a strike, so I can actually use this as a strike here. I do have a shoulder in the way, so I'd rather hit towards the, the, the side of the head, anywhere around here. Um, you can have a fist at and if you want to work classically, you can just turn it into, into a, another strike altogether. Um, but the main principle is that we've gone from here and hit this way. Um, if we move his shoulder out of the way because we've knocked his head, that's still fine. We've still exposed this jawline, we've closed all this in, and we'll strike there. So we still get that little bit of striking, a little bit of knocking there. Um, and then what we can do from there, you can actually, um, we can turn that uh, Sotoke Yakuzuki into um, almost like an Irimi Nage type technique. So, the, the Akuzuki can eventually, rather than be a strong, it can be a throwing technique. So as, um, as that attack comes in towards the stomach, we can work this way. So that Osayuki gets that out of the way. The Soto Uke then, rather than the aiming for his head, I'm actually going to bring that down here. So I'd, I'd like to aim that towards um, the, the Soto portion where his kidneys and liver and everything sit. At the same time that this hits here, this arm for the Gyakuzuki, I'm going to shoot that across so that it's under his neck. We're then going to launch his head up towards the ceiling. We then twist, just like we would with our Gyakuzuki, to the ground. My partner's obviously still holding the pads here because of the, the demonstration, but we do it then. Um, what you sort of end up with then is this movement here, 
and this heat here, we close it in. So we, we're constantly trying to close in on the outside of the opponent. So we, we're using this as a body switch. Um, if I don't particularly hit his kidneys or anything like that, any sort of slapping motion um, towards his, his lower back is enough to get a bit of a reaction to cause his back to arch. From there, I can then close that up. Now, I have obviously got the option, if I can get under his chin, brilliant, I can sort of close that in um, and use that to assist in the throw. Um, and if not, if I am under the chin, uh, leave the elbow up, then I'll turn to bring that down this way. I should have come down with it, but I so was <laughs> um, We'll keep that in anyway. Um, but over time, we can change we can change that technique so that the punching range is working from here. Um, now, uh, there's a phrase I like to use that action is always faster than reaction. So, if I've got my opponent here, we generally not going to stand here like this, trying to try and close. Um, if you're this kind of distance, it's usually because the initial the initial confrontation the strikes are failed. And then in this position where people are putting in here, and you're able to get to this kind of position here. So that, that Osayuki Soto pretty much becomes a pass and drag. So that you can close this in here. Um, then it gets really complicated. And it is, um, you don't really can work to that point, I think. <laughs> anyway, back to the more classical variation. Uh, the same principles that we used before, we can still use for that head strike. So again, if we've got that head strike coming in, we want to. Um, we want to slip past that. That um, Mawashi MP is still viable, okay? Um, and the, um, the attack towards the kidneys and liver, also viable. In this instance, my guy Akazuki, um, from here, I'd rather not um, try and come over the top to hit, okay? I'll turn you around, mate, I'm not going to do that. So, if I've managed to slip through that there, and I hit here, um, the distance I was at where I was really this close, it's very awkward for me to try and climb the top. From there, there's nothing stopping me. If I hit here, this is already primed to hit there. And it doesn't matter which direction his, his face is looking. So if he's looking down, brilliant, I'll hit all of that. If he's looking up, even better, I'll hit all of that. Um, all I need from there is to close all this in nice and tight and hit. And then once I hit once, I'm not just going to stop at that one strike. If we start looking at further application, we just build up. Um, just out of time. So we go from that very, very long distance sort of one push hit mentality to then a slightly more closed variation where I'm covering and coming in well out of the way of strong and using just as natural position really to hit. Now obviously it's very easy to say that they'll never leave their arm out, um, which is very true, um, which is why we give them something to think about. Okay, if we take his mind off what his arm's doing, he'll probably leave his arm out for long enough to give me a split second to hit him with something else. The whole reason uh, we do it from that kind of distance in this respect is because we're still trying to build up, yeah? Um, as I mentioned earlier, the reality is we're going to this kind of um, close quarters distance, and I'm not already biting chunks out of him and hitting him from here. If we end up in a position where I'm trying to make space, and all of a sudden he's going to try and hit me in the stomach, yeah? I need to be able to get some cover at the same time, some strikes. And those strikes will never look like obvious strikes. Sometimes they'll glance around, sometimes they'll hammer, sometimes they will go straight. Um, so it's something you can have an experiment with, okay, so you can look at all the different applications uh, on your own, really. <laughs>